Yippee, we're doing the string pole atlas moth. Shout out to the Rico fam, my buddies. Pause here and gather your supplies and we'll get started. Hey, we're gonna do some fun string art. The first thing you need is a piece of paper like this. Fold it in half. Good morning, okay? And make a nice crease in the middle and then open it up. So you've got some pieces of string, some paint with plastic forks is really great to have. And you just kind of stick part of your string down in there. Keep hold of the dry end and maybe stick it through the fork so, so you can kind of get the globs of paint off, but it's painty. This works with tempera and acrylic, all kinds of things. I'm gonna attempt a butterfly, so that's why I put it in that shape. This is like a one minute video, so you're not interrupting anything. Um, I put it in there. Don't forget, if you, have a, if you don't have a fork, you can use your fingers. You just have to have like a rag to wipe them dry. I'm gonna twirl this one around and hope it sort of makes a butterfly. Don't forget, you gotta hang some of that dry string out the end. I'm doing it toward the middle because it, it just makes a better butterfly. All right, one more. This is a globby one. So acrylic tempera. I've seen it done with liquid watercolors before. That works. Just be prepared to do a bunch of them and then you won't be disappointed. Okay, so I have three colors. I'm gonna fold my paper in half like this. Kind of nice and flat like that. I hold on to it and grab all my strings here at the bottom and and I kind of have my thumb over that part and pull. Whoop. Let's see what happened. Ready? The great reveal. Whoa. Do you see some of those stringy marks? You can do this over and over and decide what works for different shapes and then let it dry hang it up let it dry and we can use ink or markers and just add more detail what fun okay once it's dry you need to grab your skinny sharpies and fat sharpies or your ink and paintbrush to decide where you want the head to go and if you want there's an abdomen and then let's do the thorax with the Atlas Moth and a lot of other ones, they have these stripes. You can add some stripes there. I love the feathery antenna, so I'm just gonna add them. Even though I don't have like a, a paint there or anything, I'm just gonna add them. Okay, and I want my top feathery wing to be bigger than my bottom, so I'm just gonna add space. Now the top and the bottom um, both come from the thorax, this middle part. And I just add extra space on my white paper to add the kind of shape I want. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, my Sharpies. Uh, we're starting to dry out, so I grabbed my ink bottle and a skinny paintbrush, and I'm just gonna go over those lines. You know, as I looked at the Atlas Moth, which is nine to 12 inches um, across, super huge, beautiful moth, and I was looking at the facts and interesting facts, and do you know the Atlas Moth, when it emerges from its cocoon, it comes out without a mouth. It mean, that means it cannot eat. <laughs> so how long do you think it lives? It lives about a week, five to seven days. Wow, I thought here you emerge as one of the, the largest, most astounding moths on the whole planet, and yet you only have a week to live. And I thought about that Bible verse that says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And it's talking about good deeds done in love that are rewarded in eternity. And they last for eternity. 
I don't think we know exactly what that could be, except sometimes I feel like when God gives me a perseverance or um, a supernatural kindness, or he puts in my heart a compassion I would not have had unless I had followed the Holy Spirit's whispers in obedience. And I, I feel like so often God calls us in our short life to these little steps of faith that develop his character in our lives that we never would have developed had we not obeyed the prompting of the Holy Spirit to quickly forgive or to be generously compassionate or to show love in action in some way. But you had to do it then uh, and the opportunity is, is gone after that. Uh, so whenever you look at the moth and you do your atlas moth, remember life is short, but there are many opportunities that God gives you to build up treasure in heaven by obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Be faithful with the short time you have because God is eternal and he made your soul eternal. I was doing a Bible study um, on the eternal nature of God this week eternal means there's never a beginning and there's never an ending that god is this no stop full circle and always being that we can just not even comprehend but you know it, he also says in the bible that every single human is without excuse because of god's invisible qualities his eternal power and his divine nature are evident through what we can see in this world it's like wow every soul has a little piece of knowing that God is eternal and that we are, though life on earth is short. Psalm 90 says, Before the mountains were made, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalm 102, 12 says, You sit enthroned forever. Creation will never wear out, but you remain, and your years never end. One of my favorites is Acts 17, 24 to 25. God doesn't live in temples built by human hands. He himself does not need anything. He himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. He's the creator. In Psalm 148, this is my favorite one. It says, let the sun, the stars, the angels, all created things praise the Lord for he commanded and they were created. And if you think, wow, angels were created, the sun was created, the stars were created, all this by an eternal God. And if they praise the Lord, I think there's a song about this, if, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. I think, wow, you know, Lord, let our short life on earth be just an anthem of praise. I don't know about you, but I'm going to choose to honor God in my short life now so I can enjoy him forever in eternity.